Good morning. <clears throat> this video I'm going to show you how to build a very simple device called a ranger stove, also known as a wood gasifier camp stove. This is not the first video on YouTube to show you how to do this, but uh, I'm going to show you how to do it using only hand tools. Uh, most other videos uh, require at least one power tool in order to get the build done. Now, why would you want to do this? Uh, you have three big needs that have to be taken care of in a disaster, and those are food, water, and shelter. Until you have those three under control, everything else doesn't matter. <clears throat> you need some way to prepare your food, so this falls under the food category. Now, within your disaster plan, you should have uh, a propane, butane, or white gas stove as your primary source of... Uh, primary means of cooking your food but if the situation carries on for a long time you're going to discover that you may might not have access to fuel for your stove and it's going to run out and so having a backup plan is almost uh, paramount the ranger stove is a simple wood burning stove built from three tin cans in the middle of a disaster you may be six to eight weeks into a, uh, a grid down situation and run out of fuel. Tin cans should be easy thing to find. Uh, so, so the the material for the stove is not going to be difficult to find. Doesn't need anything special. Um, you only need a few simple hand tools, no power tools. So the lack of power to run tools is not a problem. The fuel for the stove is wood, which should be very readily available in any circumstances. And it burns the fuel efficiently, so you will conserve your limited resources. I think, and I'm going to try it out, and I'll let you guys know what, what happens. I'll bet you could cook an entire meal using just one slat from a pallet as fuel. Um, I gave it, I did a test burn of the stove uh, after I had built it and I boiled water in 10 minutes and used just a handful of twig cutoffs. You'll see what I mean. Here's the basic plan for the stove. Uh, two tin cans, one drops into the other, uh, fits tightly around the top. Uh, the outer can is the uh, outer casing, the bigger can is the outer casing and it has fresh air holes punched in the bottom of it. The smaller can is forced down into it for a tight fit and it has it's called the combustion chamber and it has combustion holes around its bottom as well but it's also got a row of excuse me secondary combustion air holes and these are smaller holes as you'll see uh, punched around the upper end of the combustion chamber and the idea is is that preheated air is mixed with the smoke to form a secondary combustion of the uh, of the smoke coming out of the stove. Tools you need: um, surprisingly fuel, a good pair of tin snips, a large pair of needle nose pliers, a, a pocket knife style can opener, and a church key style can opener. And for what it's worth, that pocket knife can opener is on a Leatherman multi-tool. And there is a pair of plier jaws in that thing as well. So um, three tools may be all you need. Um, a Sharpie marker would be a good addition to this list, as you'll see. And there is a fifth tool that you'll need. And you, I'll show it to you when we get to it. Three tin cans. You're looking at a 24-ounce can a 22 ounce can that are both the same size and a tuna fish can. Um, <clears throat> if you want a larger stove use a 24 ounce can as the burn chamber and use a coffee can as the outer casing of the stove and what you use for a, uh, a pot ring after that I'm not quite sure but uh, you'll figure something out. So as you see one can fits in the other leaving an airspace between them this airspace will preheat the air 
that will then go up through the outer casing and exit the secondary combustion holes igniting the smoke that comes out of the um, out of the burn chamber giving a very complete smokeless combustion to the stove. Let's begin. Grab your church key can opener. Start punching holes around the open side of the large can. Um, you'll want about 12 holes in a 24 ounce can. Now punch some air holes in the burn chamber. I don't know why I just punched one hole and then went and took the picture. There should be eight holes around the base of this can, minimum. Ten might be better. Flip that can over. Use the pocket knife can opener to punch these small uh, air hole slots around the rim of, of the can. I'm only showing eight here, but 12 to 16 would be a better number. Although eight worked quite well. Put the... Uh, Put the smaller can on top of the larger can, trace its outline using a Sharpie marker. And then go after the, uh, go after it with the tin snips. Uh, here I've got the, uh, the metal on the inside of that ring of that line. I've started cutting it out. Notice I'm uh, cutting back from the line, that, the blue line that I drew. Uh, you'll see why shortly, but just go ahead and cut that hole. Uh, Cut a large opening in that can there, uh, keeping inside of that blue line that you drew. And then use your tin snips to cut these radial um, cuts up to the ring, leaving a bunch of tabs. And as you see down at the bottom of the, the page, you can see I've begun to bend the tabs over. Um, no matter how you bend them over, you're not, you're not going to do it very well. So... Here's that other tool I was going to tell you about. Um, just take a stout stick and your chopping block. Put the can on it and the stick in the can. Lean into it and give it a good roll to uh, really roll those tabs in and get a more rounded uh, profile of that opening. Now it's time to put it all together. Um, <clears throat> force the uh, burn chamber into the outer casing through that opening you just cut. Uh, you'll ha um, it won't just drop straight in. You're going to have to shove it in sideways like this. Uh, use a little bit of force, a little bit of persuasion, uh, some cussing, uh, maybe a, a little swat with a stick might help. But yeah, it's going to take a little force to get that lower rim through that opening. But once it gets through, you'll be able to shove the combustion chamber all the way down into the outer casing like that. Uh, and as you can see, if uh, you look at the bottom of this thing, I don't have enough air holes in it. Uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, the fit doesn't have to be perfect. If you're really anal retentive about it, you can take a long shanked tool or a butter knife and force it down the inside of the stove and behind the tab. That uh, You can see to the right there's a bit of a gap. And you can tap on it a little bit to close that gap up, but, you know, the stove works fine without being AR about the fit here. If you're doing this uh, and it's not an SHTF situation and you got some JB Weld, you could put a ring of JB Weld on this too. It just depends on how anal retentive you want to be about it. I'm telling you, it works just fine like that. So it occurred to me that the making of the uh, pot ring might be a little bit more complicated than I could explain. So I want to show you. This is the can we use. And it's a fairly flimsy can. And it has only one removable lid. And the bottom is basically molded in place. So um, I use a side cutting can opener that removes the can by cutting the crimp. So the lid can be placed back on the can and this provides support for the can while we are punching holes in it like this and you can see that it's deforming the can so you have to punch it like you mean it right and just go all the way around like that if you just try to slowly push your way through it's not going to help so you have to 
give it a quick snap and you see even there it's uh, ruining the can right there so um, hang on a minute let me get that there we go um, there we are I'll, uh, I'll show you what we do with that ruined section of can there and try not to try not to get them too close like that there does have to be enough material in here to uh, actually physically support a pot and I think we can get one more in there that's it and then we'll just take our needle nose pliers and find that section where we hurt the can right here and we'll try to uh, bend it back out and we'll try to finish that yeah uh, we'll do our best with that then what you do is now that you've got a place to hook your can, hook your uh, can opener, find one of these openings that is, then go ahead and punch a hole right on the top. And at this point, we can take this off, and then we've got to get these little tabs out of the way because we're going to run. See, we just lift these tabs up out of the way, and then we take our tin snips. Up. and we start right here and we start snipping our way right around the edge like this and you want to try not to do what I just did and right up the uh, right up on top of the rim of the can you want to stay down uh, off the, the can rim which is being a little bit difficult, probably because these little things are in the way. Um, if you want, you can actually make a second cut with this. Ouch. Careful of the... I probably should be wearing gloves. <laughs> but you can always give yourself a new start on the cutting process. So I'm trying to hold it here for you to see on the video, which is actually making it a little more difficult for me to line up. And you see the burrs here, so you want to be careful about leaving these burrs behind. Um, like I said, I probably should be wearing, I should probably be wearing gloves to protect my hands and fingers from the sharp edges of the metal. But, There we go. That's out. And then, as I pointed out in the slideshow, let me get this. And this is the finished pot ring. Um, <clears throat> I took those uh, uh, metal uh, uh, triangles, and you can see I've rolled them up over the rim, and I've also used that stout stick to uh, roll this uh, the. To roll the, the the bottom ring there or the top ring from this view to uh, force that cut ring down into a better rim and I've also you see in the upper left hand corner made a cut all the way through the ring um, you'll see why in the next video or picture here um, this is how you fit it on the stove you expand it slightly and uh, nestle it on the top so that it's outside the rim of the burn chamber and there it will sit while the stove does its burn and here's how you store it you turn the stove upside down you spread the pub you spread the pot ring and put it down in between the burn chamber and the outer casing i do not have it fully inserted in this picture i wanted it partially out so that you could see what it was you actually put it all the way down in there and it will store very nicely um, let's do a burn test. Uh, this is actually a earlier version of the stove. You see that I've only, uh, well, I don't have enough air holes in the bottom of the stove there. But <clears throat> this is what the fuel is like. I've got some kindling on the right hand side, a little bit of tinder there in the center, and I've got a couple of twigs that I've chopped into small pieces, about the size of my thumb at the most, uh, my little finger at the smallest and uh, that's what we will fuel the stove with and we just stuff the tinder and the kindling in there and drop a match 
it will smoke for a little bit and if you blow into the air holes at the bottom uh, it will very quickly uh, ignite and start burning properly uh, not like this um, <clears throat> as you see I don't have enough air holes in either the burn chamber or the outer casing the fire is basically smoldering but you can see that hot air is being added through the secondary combustion holes causing the smoke to become superheated and combust outside of the stove this is not what we wanted uh, <laughs> went through and modified it put more holes in it and this is more like it um, let me just show you a second uh, <clears throat> This, once the stove begins to burn down, uh, it's very obvious in this photo, the reason I included it was because you can see the flame near the back there of the stove there uh, escaping out that secondary burn hole, and that is the superheated air combining with the combustible, combustible smoke and gases from the smoldering embers in the stove, um, <clears throat> and then causing them to combust. This is how we would guess a fire stove works. It in fact uses uh, super superheated air to combust the uh, the wood gases that are uh, liberated from the uh, smoldering wood. Um, so there's the stove. Um, lessons learned. Uh, first off, don't skimp on the air holes. Uh, they're very important. Like I said, 10 to 12 air holes for a 24 ounce outer chamber. Uh, 8 to 10 air holes for the burn chamber you should have fewer holes in the burn chamber so that you get air going up the casing of the stove to the secondary combustion uh, holes and the secondary combustion holes I put in 8 that seems to be the minimally effective amount uh, 12 to 16 might be better uh, it's fast and easy to build tin cans even you know months into an SHTF situation tin cans you should have tin canned food in your emergency supplies so tin cans should not be hard to source um, as you saw you only need simple hand tools probably the one thing most people aren't going to have is a pair of tin snips but then they're not cheap to uh, they're, they're not exactly inexpensive to acquire and um, you should have them anyway because you'll be using those tin cans to make other things as well um, so you something you should have it's very effective once I got the stove burned and lit up properly I put a, a cup and a half of water in another tin can put it on the stove with the pot ring and in less than 10 minutes maybe only eight minutes I had boiling water um, like I said earlier in the introduction, I'll bet I could cook an entire meal using just the wood from one slat of a, a wood pallet. Um, I intend to find out. Um, I need to practice my metalworking skills. As you saw when I was building that pot ring, it wasn't really, uh, it didn't go as, you know, as smoothly as it should have. In fact, that was the third pot ring that I made. But who cares? If you muff it, the material is free. Just throw it in the recycling bin, grab another tin can, start again. If I could do this, if I could build this stove, so can you. Okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I hope you enjoyed this. And that's it. Like, shy, like subscribe, share if you like it. Um, and subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing some more uh, do-it-yourself survival uh, videos in the coming weeks. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good evening.